morning and welcome to St. James's Church this Sunday morning, the 25th of April, 2021. Hello to everyone who's joining us on Facebook Live and for those who will be watching it later on YouTube or our Facebook channel. Just a quick announcement this morning. We have an APCM coming up on the 12th of May. It's going to be on uh, Zoom at 7.30 in the evening. So we will be passing out the Zoom logins via email. If you're not on our email list, please do let us know if you can join us. If you'd like to join us, um, please do be able to. Um, Sarah's holding up some things that she'd like to say real quick. It's good doing semaphore down the church. Um, some people have got the new one of this, but if there's anybody uh, else who wants one, um, verse a day Bible reading, but I do suggest you look up the verse in your Bible. God's quite likely to speak to you from that, not just reading the blurb here. All right, he's an individual God. He cares about you individually. Okay, but do come and ask me or ring me up or something. And as usual, thank you, Sarah. As usual for our APCM, we're doing a revision of our lector role. Miriam, who's been playing the organ for us, is our lector role officer. If you're not on the lector role, um, please do um, talk with her about getting on the lector role, um, being able to um, vote at our at our annual meetings. Um, let us prepare for worship. Everything that you need will be on the order of service that you've received or on the screen. Please do stand for the gathering. As we are still in our Easter season, we start off with Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Together we say, Together we say, Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we will have our first hymn. Please do remain standing if you'd like to or have a seat if you need to. And let us worship our God in our spirit.
Please be seated. We come to that part in our service where we confess our sins to God and say sorry for the wrongs that we have done. Let us praise our God. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he has, has given, given us, us new life. hope, new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God oh, has claimed God. us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Together we say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the collect for today, a special prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We're going to have our next song now. Here is love vast as the ocean. Please do stand if you would like, or sit, however it is that you want to worship our Lord. Yeah. 
Chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is taken from John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. The Good Shepherd and His Sheep Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, 
but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for those readings, Stella. Uh, yes, I'm going to take my mask off. It's a great joy to take the mask off. I hate these funny things. Um, and there is a rumour that we might be able to sing fairly soon, so sing in church. That would be absolutely fantastic. I really miss the singing in church. Now I look around and I think I can, I think I recognise most of you and I could name you actually tell you, I can actually tell somebody else what, what your names are. But we are being viewed remotely, or at least we hope we have an audience out there that's viewing us remotely. So I will introduce myself. My name is David Leake. I'm a, um, a verger here and an occasional preacher. I have the enormous privilege of being allowed to stand up and talk rubbish during the service um, so that you can all benefit from my lack of wisdom. Um, introductions over, let us start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, use the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts and minds to help us to come nearer to you in faith through the study of your word. Amen. Lovely readings, lovely readings. I'm going to start with the second one first. I, I pretty much always do this. I, I go in the wrong order. I don't know why. It just happens. Jesus compares himself to a good shepherd. It's a lovely, comforting image. We, 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 we're all familiar with that idea of Jesus as our shepherd who calls us by name, knows us all by name. And there is a reference in there to um, other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I think that's probably um, Jesus recognising that um, for a Jewish audience, they had to recognise that the whole world could be saved by Jesus. It wasn't just restricted to Jews as it had been in the past. This is a part of his new covenant. The image of a shepherd in those days was not necessarily as good as Jesus paints it as being. Often when people thought of shepherds, they were thinking of Poor people, people who couldn't do a proper job, but could only do the menial task of watching over a shock, a flock, a shock of sheep, a, a flock of sheep, um, because uh, such work was was seen as something that almost anybody could be uh, trusted to do. But he points out that um, those people who are hired to do the job aren't actually good shepherds at all, because at the first sign of danger. They will run away and leave the sheep to whatever danger seems to be presenting, whether it be a wolf or robbers and thieves. I don't know what the correct term for stealing sheep is, whether it's rustling like with cattle, I don't know, but uh, I'm sure there probably is a word, but I don't know. Um, thieves and robbers and wolves were a, 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 an ever-present danger, and a hired man simply wouldn't stand up to that. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I love my flock. I know them in the way that I know all of you. I recognise you by name. Now, I'm not comparing myself to a shepherd. I, I, I really don't like sheep very much, and I wouldn't want that job. They tend to be very smelly and, and um, utterly mad, in my opinion. But um, Jesus... 
perhaps sees us, that, sees us in that way. Some of the things that we do must appear to him to be utterly mad. And we probably smell, not in the literal sense, but we are stained with our sins. And that for God, and Jesus is God, is as unbearable as an unpleasant stench would be to us. God can't look on sin. So Jesus says, in order to be the good shepherd, to look after my flock, to bring my flock to God, I have to lay down my life, allow myself to be killed, in order to purge all those sins that we carry. And I carry enough on my own. I'm sure none of you carry any sin. But there are lots of people out there who carry enormous burdens of sin. So that's a lot. And it is only something as awful, terrible, and enormous as Jesus' death that can cleanse us, stop us from smelling like sheep, stop us behaving like sheep. And that's the sacrifice that Jesus made. In that sense, he lays down his life for his flock, like a good shepherd, not like one who runs away. And it is a very comforting image to think of Jesus as a shepherd. And we have some lovely songs, hymns, that uh, tell us the story of, of the Good Shepherd. And we take comfort in that, as we should. But there is also a sense in which we have to do our bit too. The Shepherd calls his sheep by name. And we, if he, we are to be in his flock, have to follow that call. We have to do what the shepherd tells us to do, even if it seems difficult. Because the shepherd can see the big picture. The sheep can't. And we are like sheep. We think we know what we're doing. But nine times out of ten, we're just following the rest of the flock not necessarily following the shepherd. So there is enormous comfort in the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. But there is also a need for us to respond in the right way. And that brings us to our second reading today, which is also by John. We believe that the, the writer of the Epistles of John is the same John, who wrote the Gospel. John, when Jesus was alive, was probably a very young man, if we're right about him writing the, the letters as well. He must have been a young man to have been around still to write these letters. By the way, um, it's clear from the Gospel of John that he enjoyed a, a deep and perhaps special relationship with Jesus, a personal relationship for a younger, from a younger man for an older man, a mentor. What a wonderful thing to have Jesus as your mentor, there to go to, there to chide you or to praise you. How wonderful must that have been? And we know that Jesus' life was entirely filled with love because God is love and Jesus is God. How must it have felt for John to be loved by love? So who better to tell us what love is? I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember the, uh, the middle to late 70s when t-shirts had slogans on them 
love is dot 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 and then it would tell you what the uh, person thought love was or postcards you could get little postcard sized notes that said love is and they would tell you all sorts of things and some of it was absolute rubbish some of it was just sentimental and there's nothing wrong with sentimental but it's only part of the picture love is sentimental but love is also aware that sometimes if you love somebody you have to tell them the truth and that can be very difficult especially uh, in a parental children relationship or if it's between two people who are who are married or close partners telling the truth can be a difficult thing to do but what does John say about love this is how we know what love is he says this is how we know Jesus Christ laid down his life well, that's a bit heavy. I mean, love is buying a box of chocolates, isn't it? Love is stopping at the petrol station to pick up some flowers on the way home. Love is saying, I love you. But laying down your life? That's a bit much, isn't it? And that's how he starts. This is how we know what love is. Love is laying down your life. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And then he goes on to say, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brothers or sisters in need, but has no pity on them, how can he say he loves them? It's nonsense. You can say the words, but unless you do the actions and share what you have with somebody who needs it, then you're not really loving. You might have warm feelings to them. I would help you out, but I'm not going to dig into my pocket to help you out. I'm not going to put myself out. I'm not going to let you into my house. Love, true love, is about giving. And then he goes on to say a bit more. Let us not love with words or language, but with actions in truth. The words are next to meaningless. I can say I love you a hundred times, but if I'm punching you in the face at the same time, you're not going to believe me. And you'd be right not to believe me. Love is in what you do, not in what you say. So this is how we know that we belong to the truth and we set our hearts at rest. Our consciences, our hearts tell us whether we're really loving or not. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because when we talk about love, we often refer to the heart. And it is in our hearts, in our inner beings, not so much in our heads, it's in our souls, because they are designed to love. Our souls are what connects us to God. He is love, and our souls, if we let them, can be love too. This is the word. It sounds very heavy. If you love somebody, you'd lay down your life for them. Jesus doesn't want you to lay down your lives in the way that he did. He's done that. He wants you to live your lives in love, expressing love by what you do rather than what you say. That's what I found in these passages. Amen.
Let us stand as we confess our affirmation of faith. Let us confess the faith of the Church. We believe in God the Father who made the world. We believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, who redeemed humankind. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. Please be seated for our prayers of thanksgiving. We praise you, eternal God, for the world which you have created and for our place in it. May you be praised forever and ever. You have given us life that we may love and serve you. And though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not let us left us in our sin, but have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. May you be praised forever and ever. We thank you that for us he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven, where he reigns in glory and prays for us. May you be praised forever and ever. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to freedom and new life in Christ. May you be praised forever and ever. And now Sue will bring us our prayers of intercession. Let us pray together for all people everywhere, according to their need. O oh God, creator and preserver of all mankind, we pray for people of every race and in every kind of need. We can feel so helpless in the face of COVID-19 and the new mutations that are affecting the world on such a scale that we can scarcely take it in. Help us to accept that we will probably never know why these catas catastrophic events happen. Guide us to understand what our own roles might be in helping to alleviate this suffering, be they great or small, and help us to accept those roles, however limited they may seem to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen your church, Lord, that we may, we may all unite in prayer as well as in practical help for those who are suffering for all reasons. We pray for courage, wisdom and guidance to stand up for our faith when it's challenged. Inspire our church leaders to lead and guide us all in our ministries as we go through life. We thank you and pray for Ellen as she heads up the worship team in Streatham during these difficult times. And we thank you for all those who are helping us to continue worshipping together in church and via the media. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During this time of turmoil, we pray, Father, for wisdom for our church leaders, including our own government. We pray for wisdom as they meet together to talk about our differences and pray for a way forward to resolve those issues without bloodshed. We pray that we may join together throughout the world to provide help for countries such as India who are overwhelmed with the COVID cases. In a few moments silence, we bring to you any particular issues that we have, that you have laid on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in mind or body 
and for those who care for them. We pray for the sick, for those who mourn, for those without faith, hope or love. And we pray in a few moments for the people that we know that are unwell, who are struggling at the moment and need a mention for us and, and to be remembered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember before God the family and friends of those known to us who have died. We're thinking particularly of the Queen and the Royal Family and pray that they will feel your love with them in their present loss. And we pray for all families who are missing loved ones at this time. You turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
please stand for our conclusion. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the, by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your spirit to your praise and glory. And let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We pray that you have a blessed week and we'll be back here again at 10 o'clock next Sunday. During the week, if you'd like to join us on Facebook Mondays at 9.15 for live prayers or on Wednesday mornings at 9.15 for Zoom prayers, please do let us know if you need the Zoom logins. Also today at 11.30, there's a social hour on Zoom. If you don't have those details, please do let us know and we'll get them to you. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.